Hello, Artful Manifestors. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're channeling a message you are meant to hear right now. And I want to tell you that I'm giving away a free personalized tarot reading. All you have to do to qualify is give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and type Harvest Moon in the comments below. I'll be announcing the winner on September 17th, 2024. All right, to choose your readings for pile number one, this is the image. Along with sunstone. And for reading number two, this is the image. Along with selenite. And for the third reading, this is the image. along with amethyst. So let your intuition guide you, whichever crystal and or image you're most drawn to is probably the reading meant for you. Of course, you're always welcome to listen to two or even all three of the readings as there may be additional messages for you there. You'll find a link to all the readings in the description box below. Hello, reading number one, you chose the sunstone which is connected to your sacral and solar plexus, uh, your sacral chakra. So it increases your creativity, uh, your personal power. It gives you confidence, uh, boosts your positivity. Really nice stone. And this is the image you chose. Please let me know if you're a fan. This is from my neighbor Totoro. And, you know, this image very much is about positivity as well. Uh, if you're familiar with the story, uh, you see a father with two young girls, his daughters, and their mother, his wife, is very ill. But you see they're riding um, a bike, laughing, playing, and throughout the film, the father does a great job of um, keeping the girls positive and hopeful. So definitely there's a message of positivity here. All right, let's get some oracle cards and see what other messages Spirit has for you today that you're meant to hear right now. Stay positive is definitely one of them. I do list all the cards that I use in the description box below, and if I have a link where you can find them, I'll include that as well. All right, we have Stargazer, set your sights higher. All right, so don't be complacent, don't settle. Uh, there's definitely no passion in settling, right? shoot for the stars, aim for your dreams, stay focused, stay positive, set your sights higher. Yeah, love that. All right. Tend, maintenance, encouragement, guidance. So again, encouragement, stay positive. Yeah. You know, when you plant a seed, you want to keep nurturing it and you're hopeful. You you come out watering it and checking on it, making sure there's no um, creepy crawlies consuming it. And you're positive. You know, you're hopeful that it's going to continue to grow day by day. You keep nurturing it and you see a little bit of growth every day. That's what spirit wants you to do with your dreams. Just day by day every day just nurture a little bit all right let's see what other message spirit has let's get this one solitude think of being alone as meaning you're all one and in total harmony with everything the greatest treasures are those that wait silently during your quiet times let you see where it says all one instead of alone. All one. I like that. 
All right, and it could be that this alone time is giving you time to work on your dreams, right? All right, let's get some tarot card and see what other messages Spirit has for you right now. Reading number one, what does Spirit want? Reading number one to know, oh, at the sun, two came out. All right, we have this one, the high priestess intuition we see uh, somebody here with their familiar their runes their tarot cards their crystal ball so they're divining they're casting strategizing planning but also use your intuition right what does your your inner vision tell you and the sun, I love that you got the sunstone and the sun. Positivity, stay positive. Stay hopeful, trust. Trust that things are going to work out for you. But also don't ignore the signs. So what I mean by that is... Let's say you're in a situation, we'll just say like a work environment where you're not valued, you're not paid well, you're not treated the way you would like to be treated, and you wanna stay positive that things are gonna work out for you, and somebody, you, you hear somebody talking about um, some new company that's hiring and it's a great company and they have all these benefits or you see <clears throat> a sign on the somewhere a poster a flyer about this new company that's hiring um, and so that that may be the sign that you're meant to not stay positive and stay where you are and hope that where you are changes. It's staying positive and trusting that the universe is going to provide for you, provide for you the opportunities, the things that you need. All right, let's keep going. The Five of Cups. So the Five of Cups is, you know, focusing on what you don't have, missed opportunities, um, regret, remorse, disappointment. But we see up here, there's still a whole bottle of wine and two full glasses. So, you know, no use crying over spilt milk. What's done is done. And if something's truly meant for you, it will find its way to you. So s stay positive. Um, don't worry about this, all right? You still have opportunities. There's still hope. There's still things you can do. There's a still uh, a way forward, all right? Let's get some more. The moon, something to be revealed. There's something to be revealed. Something hidden. It could be, you know, something that you're not seeing that's right behind you or right in front of you. Okay, again, flew out. Five of Cups. Yeah, there's definitely a change coming. I mean, Two of Cups. Ooh. I said five, but here's the five of cups. Two of cups is harmony. Harmony. Even the cats are, <laughs> look, even the cats are sharing. We have a couple here toasting with the sun. Again, the sunlight focusing on what you want. There's definitely a different way to see things. You know, again, like if you are alone right now, not perceiving it as being alone, like lonely, 
but perceiving it as, oh, thank goodness I have this time right now to work on this project or my resume, that's Agnes, um, taking advantage of that alone time and not seeing it as, oh, you know, I'm alone right now, recognizing, oh, this is a great opportunity for me to do this X, Y, Z thing. Balancing yourself, getting yourself in harmony. The Ten of Swords. So the good thing about tens is they're the completion of something, the end of something. So I see some painful situation coming to an end. And here we see somebody reaching for their broom to save themselves. The seven of wands, yeah. You have the, a higher, you're in the higher ground. You have a vantage point. Okay, I'm really beginning to see now what spirit is conveying here. Here you are, the high priestess, trying to predict the future. And what spirit wants you to know is that it's not about predicting the future, it's about creating it. So you create it by setting your compass towards positive and happy outcomes, success, whatever it is that you want, or by looking at what you don't want or don't have or mistakes. Uh, that's, it's like, Okay, they're showing me uh, somebody in gymnastics and wherever your head goes, your body follows. And so that's, you know, in the physical sense, if you're tumbling, wherever you put your head, your body's going to follow in that direction. And it's the same with your energy. Wherever you put your focus and your energy, that's what you're going to see created in the world. Um, it's like with the, the predictions, it's like getting in the car and saying, okay, let's try to predict where the car is going to take us today. And you don't predict where the car is going to take us. You decide where you're going to drive the car, what destination you're going to, just like the spike. We see the road changes, but he's driving. He decides which path to take which destination to go to because he knows at the end of this path that's the place that he wants to arrive and so pointing yourself in the direction that you want to arrive and this you know um, setting your sights on what it is that you want and then taking action ma maintaining those types of actions that align with your end goal is what's going to create harmony within you. Every time you do something that doesn't align with what it is that you want, whether you want peace, a house, a relationship, a, a career, uh, success, independence, whatever it is that you want, if you act in accordance with that, with receiving that, with attaining that, then you will experience harmony within yourself and within the world around you. You know, set your sights higher and look at this picture. We see a cat looking at its reflection and it's bigger than it thinks it is. You can do so much more than you think you can but again I do see you being harmonious I see you um, conquering these negative beliefs negative thought patterns and finding the vantage point which is not predicting where you want to go 
but deciding where you want to go and pointing your compass there. Let's get another card from this deck. All right, this one feels like it wants to come up. The Queen of Pentacles. Yes, I love that. This is what you end on. So the Queen of Pentacles is nurturing. She's grounded. She's practical and successful. She has all of her needs met and more. Love that. All right, I also want to get for you a, that's Cleo, if you hear somebody coming in. I also want to get one of these cards for you. Let the spirit fill at reading number one could use at this time. All right, I feel this one wants to come out. Strength. Strength, stability in this hour, endurance, stamina, I empower. All right, I want to read to you what the guidebook says about this card. Give me just one moment. All right, it says, If this spell has chosen you, the universe wishes for you to know that you are strong, that you can be strong, and to consider the many ways in which you have already been strong in your life. Being strong is not about being forceful, unkind, or uncruel, nor is it to be unyielding, unbroken, yes, but unbending, unyielding, no. Being strong is also about being yourself despite all the pressures of the world to conform, give in, acquiesce, and hand over your true self. This spell and the energy it will weave will strengthen you so that you can stand up and endure without breaking. And it has a little spell that goes with it. It says this spell is, a, is wonderful to cast during a new or young moon. You will need a small piece of red fabric and some blue thread, as well as a little nettle, an acorn or oak twigs, dandelion or rosemary, several cloves and a star anise. Visualize a circle of blue fire burning bright and strong, dancing with power and energy all about you as you place your ingredients in the center of your red fabric chant in my body soul and mind into these sacred three i wind strength stability in this hour endurance stamina i empower and by the power of three by three as i do will so mote it be tie up your pouch with the thread and feel yourself growing stronger and stronger in your mind body and spirit when you have finished your pouch, pop it under your pillow, or you may wish to carry it with you for the next few days. Return to your sacred space and see your circle of blue fire burn brightly, then shimmer and be absorbed back into the universal energy, taking the spell's power out into the immense power of the universe to bring you strength. Blessed be. I love that you got the sunstone which is all about power and then you got the strength spell you are strong you're this big strong cat i love that you're capable you can do this you don't have to predict you just decide what you want and you go for it reading number one i am wishing you the best so excited for you. You can do this. You're powerful, you're strong, and you're entering a phase of creative energies where you can manifest what you want. You're always welcome to reach out to me via my website for a personal reading. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye. Hello, reading number two, welcome. You chose the selenite heart, and selenite is a very calming, soothing stone. It clears and cleans your energy. It connects you to the higher realms. Um, some people say that if you hold um, a piece of selenite, you can see an angel.
And I don't know if you can see it, but I see the letter M here. Can you see that? So if M is significant, you know somebody with an M could also be Archangel Michael. Um, okay, you also chose this card. If you're a fan, let me know. This is from um, the Spirited Away film. And these are little soot balls that have a spell on them so that they can take coal and add it to the furnace to warm up the bath water in this bathhouse for spirits. So it could be about delegating. It could be about um, kind of feeling like you have a spell on you. Let's get some more cards and see what that's about. All right, I do list all the cards that I use in the description box below. And if I have a link where you can find them, I'll include that as well. Oh, okay. Drum, dream and journey. I love that. Yeah. If you can dream it, you can have it. All right, what message does spirit have for reading number two? What does spirit want? Reading number two, want to know at this time. <laughs> All right, Moss Agate, positivity and change. Okay, I'm, I feel like I'm already getting kind of a, a vibe like I got in reading number one. So if you were drawn to reading number one, there may be a message for you there. All right, let's get one of these cards. What messages? Spirit want. Lost and found. What was once lost is about to be found, thanks to the lost and found fairy. Sometimes she can help us find things we never even realized were lost. Okay, so what I'm seeing is somebody who um, maybe is cleaning or organizing, and then they find something that they completely forgot about. And it could be exactly like, oh, I forgot that I had even lost this, or I was looking for this a long time ago and I couldn't find it, and I forgot all about it. It's something um, significant though, that you're, you, you will be happy that you found. So again, I see somebody like cleaning out a drawer or going through boxes in their closet and finding something significant. All right, let's let's keep going. What messages does spirit have for reading number two? What is reading number two meant to hear at this time? Oh, okay. We have seven of cups. So having choices, having options, wanting to make the right choice. All right, the moon. Yeah, this card did come out in reading number one. So the moon can be the subconscious mind. It can be um, something hidden, something yet to be revealed, intuition. Nine of cups, wishes fulfilled, contentment. All right, very interesting. Interesting that we have the Seven of Cups and then the Nine of Cups. Are you worried about making the wrong choice? Hmm. Let's get some more cards. Okay. Let's see if we can fit all of these. All right, we have the Ace of Wands. The Eight of Cups. A lot of cups. The World. Ace. 
and the Page of Cups. Let's see if we can fit one more card. Oh, this one wants to come out. The Eight of Pentacles. So you have the Eight of Cups and the Eight of Pentacles. So many cups. You know, cups are associated with water. So it does make me think of um, Cancerian, uh, Scorpio, Pisces, Zodiac. If that's you, please let me know. If it's not, don't worry. It's just that kind of energy. Uh, you know, even the moon is associated with water. And water is about emotions. And so what that tells me is that your emotions are telling you something. If you're having trouble making a choice, for example, um, let your emotions, your feelings help you decide. So if you, um, you know, if you have multiple things, you can roll a dice, like assign each choice to a different number, roll the dice and notice how you feel when you see what number it is. If you feel disappointed, Again, we're using our feelings to decide. So if you feel a disappointment, then you know that's not the right choice for you. If you feel relieved or excited, then that means that's probably the right choice for you. But I do, I, it, it seems like somebody's having trouble deciding about something. And there's something about to be revealed. And I think this is going to be a good thing, whatever this is that's revealed, because the very next cup is uh, the never, next cup. The very next card is the Nine of Cups, which is contentment, wishes fulfilled. And this begins the start of something new. The Ace of Wands is the beginning of something you're passionate about. And look at here we see. Um, a quill and a book like somebody writing. We see a paintbrush, a palette, musical notes. It could be something creative, something artistic, um, but it's just something that you are passionate about, something that you are creating. And it's interesting that here we see somebody painting. So if definitely something you are creating in even this final card eight of pentacles we see somebody creating something they're pouring different potions in here to create something and now they have a shop so it's like here you you have this idea this is a gift from the universe you have this idea and it's like you're trying to decide something something gets revealed to you it's like that last bit of information that you needed now you know what brings you contentment you're aligning with that you set your goal on it you turn your back on this indecision and you take this holistic approach to the world you're gonna you can have everything that you want and you begin to develop the skill, to practice the skill, to work your craft, to create, to build this creative project. And then here you are with your own little shop, creating, making a living. Wow. I feel something that you lost was your inspiration, your motivation, your dream. We have dream and journey, positivity change, lost and found. And when we look at the story that the cards tell, I feel that you're finding your muse. You're, you forgot about something that was important to you, some dream, and now you're finding that inspiration, that muse, that excitement, that spark of creation to pursue it. I love your message, reading number two. 
Yeah, it's like you had this spell cast on you where you couldn't decide things for yourself or you felt like you couldn't. You were just kind of going through the motion, doing somebody else's bidding. And here I see you starting something new. You're turning your back on something. This, again, it could be indecision. It could be um, a job. It could be a situation, something. You're turning your back on something and you are going for it. And it's, it's going to have a positive impact on everything. With the world, that's everything. That's holistic. But I do see you being successful creating whatever this is. Let's get one of these cards. I'm so excited for your reading number two. This feels like such good news. Okay, I feel this card really wants to come out. <gasps> what did I tell you? Creativity, 33. Three, three, three. You might even be seeing that. Okay. Let's, uh, it says, by all above and all below, let me connect, let creativity flow. All right. I want to tell you what the guidebook says. Give me just one moment. All right. It says, if this spell has chosen you, the universe wishes you to understand that there are gifts that you and only you have to offer the world. Love that. Take the time to work the spell's special magic so you can come to understand and express those gifts. All right, and here's the spell. You will need a candle, a pen, and a journal. Go to your sacred space during the waxing or full moon. Set your candle on your altar and light it. Breathe in for three counts. Pause for one count, then breathe out for three. Do this three times. When you feel still and calmed, visualize a circle of white light all about you spiraling into infinity. Chant three times. By earth and air, water and fire, Bridget ignite, love inspire. By sword and wand, stone and flower, bring to me creativity's power. By all above and all below, let me connect, let creativity flow. And by the power of three by three, as I do will, so mote it be. If you want to take a screenshot of those words, there you go. Ask silently for Luke's talents to be shared with you and for Bridget's fires of inspiration to ignite your innate creativity. Open your magical journal Take up your pen and write down any ideas, impressions, or doodles that come to you. Let yourself be a channel for creativity and divine expression. Be whimsical and light in your approach. When you feel the time is right, thank Lug and Bridget. Blow out your candle, thus sending a wish out to Bridget and to Lug. See your circle of white light shimmer, then be taken back to the universe taking with it all your wishes and this spell's energy. Blessed be creative one. And of course, with spells, you're always welcome to make them your own, just like a recipe, right? If you don't have one specific ingredient and when you're cooking, you may substitute something else and it's the same with spells. You put your energy into it, you make it your own, but Mostly what I feel like this card is, is confirmation that you are creative and that you're getting this creative spark back. If you've lost it, you're getting this new um, passion, passion for life, a, a feeling of purpose. And I see you, you know, the world card is also success. I see you being very successful at this. I'm so excited for you. Please let me know how this resonates. I love to hear the connections you make with your life and the reading, and you're always welcome to connect with me on my website and get a reading of your own, a personal reading. I'm wishing you the best. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye. Hello, reading number three. Welcome. You chose the amethyst, which helps to 
increase your intuition. It's a very calm, relaxing stone. It also helps to balance the chakras. Um, it increases your intuition, your creativity. Very nice stone. And you chose this image. Let me know if you are a fan of this um, studio or film. This is from Princess Mononoke. And these are little nature spirits. So I feel that you have nature spirits around you, little helpers. Um, I really, with the amethyst and this, I feel that you're a very intuitive person, a person that does love nature and maybe you have pets, animals, um, but plants, you may even be a plant person, a crystal person, um, just kind of very shamanic and or a witchy kind of person, very magical person, somebody that works with the elements of the earth. Ugh, I love your energy reading number three. It feels so magical. All right, let's get some oracle cards. I do list all the cards that I use in the description box below. And if I have a link where you can find them, I include that as well. All right, what message does Spirit want to share with reading number three today? Okay, she will unleash the wild within. All right, I feel that many of you already are this. You're you don't need to be rewilded. I feel that you are very much in tune with that, that natural side of yourself. And if you aren't, then this is a call for you to return to nature. All right. Spend some time under the stars, under the moon, camping amongst the trees. Oh, okay. Bird, freedom and opportunity. Okay, let's get one of these. I feel that you are very much a free spirit, but if you, again, if you don't feel like you are, then this is a call for you to take action, to free yourself, to, to be more free, to liberate yourself. Okay, two wanted to come out. We have wait for winter. During the coldest months, the fairy queen of winter will help you manifest your most heartful wishes as long as your intentions are for the highest good of all. All right. So I'll say that for me, winter is just a couple of months off where I am. This is a timeless reading and um, depending on where you live, I'm just going to say that what if there's something you're planning on doing, then the advice is to wait a couple of months, you know, do your research. But let's see, inner child, the fairies of playfulness remind you to make time to embrace your inner child. Playing keeps us young at heart, do something silly and fun, but stay safe. Love that. All right, let's get some tarot and see what other messages we can get. What message does Spirit have for reading number three? What do you want reading number three to know at this time? Okay, Queen of Pentacles. Someone very practical, down to earth nurturing very earthy yes this is the kind of energy i'm getting from you somebody that's very earthy i'm hearing kitchen witch temperance balance moderation and i i do love this depiction of temperance because we see a little bit of everything. We see a, a healthy glass of water, some carrots, healthy foods, a journal, a laptop for work, 
a martini, some treats, her pet. She's exercising. A, a balanced life. Making sure that you're not overindulging in one specific area, but keeping everything in balance. And you know, take timing uh, with a grain of salt. Spirit's telling me this wait for winter. Um, for some of you, it's something that you've already started and you've been waiting and you should see results in a month or two. For others, it could be, um, you know, everything is in divine timing. So when it feels right to do something, then do it. Uh, do, uh, especially if it's something taking care of your needs, don't put it off. So if this means something to you, then great. But remember, this is a general reading. So not every message may be for everyone. All right, Page of Swords. We see somebody with new knowledge, carrying it out into the world. What other messages do you have for reading number three? Okay. This may be too many cards, but we will see. We have the star. And the Six of Swords, the Ten of Wands, the Two of Pentacles, more balance, and the Seven of Pentacles. All right, so you have two major arcana cards. Temperance, which is about balance, doing things in moderation, taking a holistic approach. In other words, you know, making sure that you're giving each area of your life the right amount of energy and attention. And the star is about hope, success, Recuperation, recovery, restoration. And the Six of Swords is, you know, feeling like you're getting away with something. Or feeling like somebody else is getting away with something. And then we have the Ten of Wands, which is, uh, it could be feeling burdened. I mean, this cat is on this person's back and certainly the cat can walk itself. There's no need to carry the cat and all of these brooms uphill. And then here we see somebody balancing on a seesaw, balancing finances, and then seven of pentacles somebody cultivating their wealth, their resources. Yeah, so I feel that you're learning um, new ways to communicate. Okay, what they're showing me with this Six of Swords and the Ten of Wands, it's like, you know, see all these books and this scroll, it's knowledge, right? 
swords are knowledge, communication, um, ideas, thoughts. And so it's like you have this new knowledge and you can be successful at it. And perhaps you've already experienced some success, but you feel like you don't deserve it, like you're getting away with something. It's like uh, you've been indoctrinated into this belief that you must work hard and suffer. Um, that things shouldn't be easy for you. It, you may not even be aware that you have this belief because it was just something that was modeled for you at a young age. Um, it might even be more internalized than that, like uh, in your DNA, because the generations before you, that's what was modeled for them. But what I see is that you're bringing balance to this. You know, we see both of these people balancing. And remember, the star is success. I see that you do, this is, you know, you do want to be the queen of pentacles. You want to have this wealth this abundance around you. You want this independence and you want to nurture that wealth. And the way to do that is to let go of this idea that having something come to you easily is getting away with something and that you have to work hard for it. That's the way to balance the energies. Um, there is definitely a message of worthiness and believing that you're worth this even exchange of energy. But I, I do see you succeeding. I do see you being capable of balancing this. Again, remember the star is a major arcana and it is balance. And then the last card, we see somebody literally cultivating this wealth, this abundance. They have money growing on the trees as well as these grapes. So I do see you doing it. Let's get a card from this deck. Let's see what Spirit has. What have you been working on? Okay, I feel like this one wants to come out. Creativity. All right, this came out in reading number two. So if you were drawn to reading number two, perhaps there's a message for you there as well. By all above and all below, let me connect, let creativity flow. And let me read to you what the guidebook says. If this spell has chosen you, the universe wishes you to understand that there are gifts that you and only you have to offer the world. Take the time to work the spell's special magic so you can come to understand and express those gifts. So, you know, now with the this reading, reading that, it takes on a whole new meaning than it did from the from reading number two. It's again, this not feeling like you're worthy of whatever this payment is, whatever these resources are that you're getting for your new knowledge, for your new success, feeling, you know, guilty or unworthy of it. Um, yeah, I love this. You and only you have to offer the world. There's something special. All right, so here is the spell, if you're interested. You will need a candle, a pen, and a journal. Go to your sacred space during the waxing or full moon. Set your candle on your altar and light it. Breathe in four, three counts. Breathe in for three counts. Pause for one count, then breathe out for three. Do this three times. When you feel still, and calmed, visualize a circle of white light all about you, spiraling into infinity. Chant three times. 
by earth and air, water and fire, Bridget ignite, lube inspire, by sword and wand, stone and flower, bring to me created creativity's power. By all above and all below, let me connect, let creativity flow. And by the power of three by three, as I do, will, so mote it be. Ask silently for Luke's talents to be shared with you and for Bridget's fires of inspiration to ignite your innate creativity. Open your magical journal, take up your pen and write down any ideas, impressions or doodles that come to you. Let yourself be a channel for creativity and divine expression. Be whimsical and light in your approach. When you feel the time is right, thank Lug and Bridget. Blow out your candle, thus sending a wish out to Bridget and Lug. See your circle of white light shimmer, then be taken back into the universe, taking with it all your wishes and the spell's energy. Blessed be creative one. Love that. Wow. So excited for you reading number three. This is a huge milestone getting past this and enjoying enjoying the life that you deserve, cultivating your wealth and having more than you need. You deserve it. You are worthy. This is your message from spirit. You are worthy and you deserve a nice life. You absolutely do. And I, you are magical. Definitely. You're, you're definitely a magical spiritual person. You're always welcome to connect with me through my website for additional guidance. I'm wishing you the best. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye.